I lost my youngest daughter earlier this year. She passed away from SIDS. I've kind of gotten my daughter kept from me since my other daughter passed away. People have been going around saying that I've killed my baby. Hey guys, please excuse me, I've been cleaning. So today we have a case where mom has a one month old baby that passed away and she says the baby passed away from SIDS. And ever since that happened, the dad of her five year old has not let her see the five year old. And it's insinuated that he thinks either by neglect or whatever reason, it's her fault that the baby passed away. But then come to find out, mom also doesn't have running water at her house. So that is a big deal. Let's see what the judge has to say. Mr. Rogers, where are we on this? Um. Well, I have for the petition for paternity, the three motions that was required for me of like the parenting plan and the other things I was submit, I have got submitted today. So you should be receiving them at some point. Um, okay, why did you why did you wait till today to file these things? Because I didn't realize that I was supposed to have the parenting plan and everything. and I wasn't able to get three copies of them made. Um, I called the court this morning and they said that they were able to make copies of it for me. That's the reason why it took me so long. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I trust that you've talked to Taylor Kingsley about a parenting plan. No, I haven't talked to Taylor about anything at all. I just thought that I was supposed to fill out the things that what the motions that were on the paperwork. OK, yeah, I'm not totally sure what you mean by motions, but because um, I haven't seen them. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if we've got any legitimate controversy here. Taylor Kingsley, let me address you. Yeah. Uh, from your answer, it would appear that you're not contesting that Bronson is the natural father of this child, correct? No, no sir. Okay. Um, okay, go ahead. I'm just, this whole situation's just been frustrating for me. Why has it been frustrating for you? Well, this happened why we have to end up with the custody plan because I lost my youngest daughter earlier this year. She passed away from SIDS. And I'm sorry to hear that. You have my sympathy. I have not gotten the best sympathy from from Bronson and from his side of things. And I've kind of gotten my daughter kept from me since my other daughter passed away. That's why we're even in this custody court. So I can actually try to be able to see my daughter again. Cause I haven't seen her since my one month old baby's funeral. And when was that? March 9th. Okay. And you're representing since, this court that the cause of death on the death certificate is sudden well, infant death syndrome? That's what the detectives have been telling me. Um, we don't have an official cause of death yet. We don't even have the autopsy back yet as well. But uh, to, because the people have been going around saying that I've killed my baby, and I'm sorry, this is really emotional for me to talk about. I have went and gotten a polygraph just to further prove that I'm not a neglectful parent, and sometimes things just happen. Okay. I deal with caseworkers every week. Um, I don't know, I just, I went through a really tragic event, and as a result of that, I got my oldest daughter withheld from me since since literally her funeral. That was the last day I saw her. Okay, and this child was born in June of 2019? Yes. The one that we're doing this case for, yes. Okay, right. That's what I'm talking about. So, uh, that child is five. Yes. I just missed her birthday. Okay. Why haven't you just gone to pick her up, Taylor? I'm not allowed to. What do you mean you're not allowed to? Who who says you're not allowed to? I, okay. My so parents, just, just tell me simply, 
Who's telling you you can't see your child? Bronson. Okay. And, and Bronson has never... superior rights over you because why? I don't know. Taylor, I've Taylor, taken he this doesn't. to police. He, he doesn't have any superior rights over you unless there's some sort of protective order. Uh, I don't I know if the child was put in any type of police protective custody. I, I don't know if some governmental agency has intervened in this. But presuming they haven't, you you both have equal rights to this child. I was already known of that. He just refused to let me have her. Okay. Because the house is unfit. It, there's holes in the floor. They can't. My daughter can't use the restroom there. She can't even wash her hands. They don't have a working stove. Yes, we do. I have had to pay their bills before to make sure that they have had electricity on in their house for my daughter. We have electricity. We have food. And when you say we, Taylor, who are you referring to? My father. Okay. My house wasn't the best before, and he's not wrong. He has had to help with bills before out of the own kindness of his heart. I deal with caseworkers every week. They come into my house. They they have been helping me get, get my stuff fixed. So that's not anything anybody would have to worry about. Hmm. It's just been excuse after excuse after excuse to not let me have my daughter. And that's why we're here in court today. All I want is just to see my five-year-old daughter that I haven't seen in almost six months. For absolutely no reason other than excuse this, excuse that. I've even offered to go stay at my mother's house to not even have any issues with this. And still always got told me, if I may speak to just him, we haven't gotten an autopsy. You might not understand Sid's Bronson. But nothing I did made her die. I have went and sat through an excruciating polygraph for this whole matter. But I am not a neglectful parent like you seem to think I am. And we were together for a really long time. It was probably one of your longest relationships. You know me. You know I'm not a bad parent. All right. Um, back to business here. Uh, Taylor, earlier you mentioned that caseworkers are coming into your home. Yes. Why are they doing that at this stage? They've been doing it since my daughter passed away to help me keep on the right track and make sure that I'm doing what I need to be doing so that I don't essentially fall off the deep end with literally losing a one-month-old baby. Okay, when you say caseworkers, are these DCF workers or... DECA. DECA, okay. I see okay. them one, at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. They kind of come at random sometimes. Like, actually, before I got on this call, my caseworker actually called me and was asking about court and stuff and told me to call her afterwards. I've done everything I possibly can do to show that I am, I am fit to take care of my daughter. I have food. I have electricity. I do not have running water at the particular moment. And that is simply for the fact that we have to replace the main water line. And I've been trying to figure out how much that's going to be. I but I do have like places that I can stay. I would also like to bring up the matter of that when I first started keeping Scarlet, I tried to take her to the doctor. Well, actually, before I kept Scarlet, 
Um, I tried to take her to the doctor three times and her insurance had had tailors for the past three months at that time telling me that she was on the phone with the insurance people, the state insurance people. And every time I took her to the hospital to get her eczema checked out or to have a checkup done, they said that her insurance was left, that her insurance wasn't good. So I finally went and got her insured through state insurance. She has Sunflower that's now under my name. I had to get her a new physician because Taylor took me off of all the stuff here in El Dorado with her old physician, so they couldn't give me access to any of her medical records. Um, what else? I have her enrolled in Circle School District right now, currently. She's just been to the dentist. Her shot records have been updated and everything. Where, where do you reside, Mr. Rogers? Here in El Dorado. Okay. And she's in Leon. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Taylor, do you have access to uh, a vehicle transportation? I'm actually currently about to trade in my non working car for a working car. I just got to get a, a hold license? of the title. Bronson. This, okay, this is my point. Just, just a moment. Just a moment. We're, we're not going to argue is, or bicker here. But this is my point. No matter what I do to try to show that I am trying to work through stuff, he is trying to, to mess it up every way he can. I am trying. Right now, I don't have a working car, no. I am literally currently talking to someone. I just have to get my bill of sale and get the title, and I will have a working car. No, just for the record, I do not have a license, but I am getting a working car, so then I can just go take the test. It's just a matter of the fact I've I've never went through driver's ed when I was younger. I, okay. I didn't have the ability to go out. Okay, and he's does saying your, does that your father... Who lives with you have access to a car? Yes, he does. And he would help you? Yes, I have more than plenty of help to transportate, get back and forth. It, it was me that was taking her back and forth before we had all these problems where he wouldn't let me see her. I tried to do everything to make things convenient for him, but then... Things got messed up for me because my daughter passed away and everyone believes that I did it to her. And I've been fighting that stigma ever since. I am not a neglectful parent. All right. I don't even get told about her being enrolled in school. I used to take her to her doctor's appointments for the first four years of her life. Her insurance got messed up because of something with the insurance company. And I'm sure you've had your times of being on the phone on hold for hours at a time. I would never get calls back. I would sit there repeatedly. Well, I felt that I would get told that I would do nothing about it. And then okay. they would fight with me. It's not only him. It's his girlfriend, too. All right. I've had to almost get a stalking order placed on his girlfriend because she's tried attacking me multiple times. It's just gotten to a point where we obviously have to come through you. And all I want out of this, I want 50-50 and I just want to be able to see my kid. You want shared want custody. Yes, I want to be able to know about my daughter's schooling stuff and not have to literally drive to the school to try to go pick her up to get told that hey. Bronson already picked her up and I'm not even allowed to even just see how she's doing in school because he does all these things without consulting with me first as her parent. All right, Bronson. And I've just been left to okay, deal just a minute, with it. Taylor. I'm, I'm to deal with it. To deal with it. She called last year. She called Skelly School three times, asking the principal and the desk clerks if that she could come pick up Scarlett without telling me. So the principal and the desk clerks it immediately called year. me, telling me what was going on. So yes, I did go pick Scarlett up from the school. 
right. because I don't want Taylor taking her from with me without my not my without my acknowledgement. Like that's messed up. That's golden. Yeah. All right. The court's going to make some interim rulings here, starting with the fact that the issue of paternity is not contested in this case. The court finds that Brans uh, Bronson C. Rogers is the father of the child in controversy in this case. Scarlett Rogers, uh, age five. Um, the court also makes a finding that uh, essentially Bronson has the de facto custody of the child. Ultimate custody rulings in this case will be made later. Uh, the court uh, finds that the mother in this case is entitled to parenting time with this child. And the court's going to make some interim orders in that regard. Uh, Taylor, I'm going to expect that you're going to arrange whatever transportation is necessary to accommodate these orders. You've been away from your daughter mm -hmm. for a considerable period of time. I'm going to start off with a reacclimation visit, a, a relatively short one. And we're going to do that at the McDonald's restaurant in El Dorado at noon on Saturday. Okay. Uh, uh, Bronson's got to have her there. Bronson, you can stay, but you you get away and you sit in some other booth somewhere. And I just want uh, mother and daughter to uh, a visit during that time for an hour. Uh, Taylor, I'm going to expect that you buy her lunch. Patronize the restaurant mm -hmm. while you're there. You know, they're not a visitation center. They're a restaurant. So, but it's yeah. a place where kids feel comfortable generally. And I'm pretty sure that you can find something on the menu that she will eat. Okay. okay. I think you need to be responsible to buy her lunch and then visit with her for an hour, one hour, noon to one. And then at one o'clock, the visit's over. Uh, Bronson needs, doesn't need to be involved in it. Like I say, he can stay in the restaurant. He can eat. He can Keep a watchful eye, but I don't want him eavesdropping, and I don't I don't want him interfering with the time between mother and child. You two just need to catch up with each other for an hour. I would love that. Well, and it's going to happen. I yeah, I'm not against that at all. Well, I, I'm glad you're not against it because the court's uh, going to order it. Furthermore, after that, I think it's time for the mother to have this child on her own. But I am not comfortable at all with any type of overnight visitation at this point. If you have a residence that doesn't even have running water, that's not a place that's appropriate for overnight visits with the child. So uh, following that, the following Saturday, um, and I think that for a while, we're going to just keep doing things each Saturday from noon to six. You can take the child. Um because I don't think that the distance is really that prohibitive, I'm going to have Bronson deliver the child to you and pick the child up. Is it just him? Because what do you mean just him? He has a girlfriend that I do not get along with. I, I, I'm not going to restrict him backyard. he has in his car with him. Uh, she should stay out of it completely. Uh, an exchange should be very short and very to the point. I don't know why she needs to be involved in it at all. If there's communication to take place regarding clothing or activities or whatever, you two discuss it. You're the parents. And I don't want I third parties interfering with it. One thing. Furthermore, what, just a moment. I'm not done yet. Taylor, yes. this uh, boyfriend guy that's in the house, he is never to be alone with that child. He doesn't not, not even live seconds. here. He doesn't live here. Okay, fine. But if he's over, he can't be left alone with that child under any circumstances. I'm actually not even currently together with him. Fine, then it won't be an issue. Okay. I don't. I don't necessarily want those two to have any contact at all. Okay. From all right, my Bronson. understanding, there is a no contact order between those two. Oh, okay. Well, follow the no contact order, then that will address the court's concerns. Um. Remember, though, you've only got six hours of time, Taylor, so you need to focus on her and her exclusively. Uh, I, I don't mind outside activities. If you guys want to do outside activities, a park or a movie or whatever it is that you want to do, but I, I'm going to enforce this time strictly 12 to 6 on Saturday. Uh, you kind of need to build your relationship back with her. Okay? 
So we're going to do the reacclimation visit at McDonald's. That's a one-time deal for an hour this Saturday, and then in subsequent Saturdays from 12 to 6 until further order of the court. Uh, we will set another hearing where I'll review this matter and see where we're at. Uh, you need to get your house straightened up, Taylor, if you want to have expanded I've, I've rights with your daughter. I've uh, already been in this process over six months. It would be helpful. It's if not my house. Written, it's my dad's house. Just a moment. Let me talk. If if you can, if you've got caseworkers from DECA that are coming in, if you can get them to write a letter regarding the suitability of your home, that you're ready, that that home can accommodate, properly accommodate overnight visits, the court will consider expanding. But uh, I want some okay. third party to... Uh, that I, whose opinion I respect, uh, give an assessment of the, of the home situation, given Bronson's concerns, which at least on their face look legitimate. So the DECA workers are very experienced at this kind of thing, and they'll check out the house. And if they say it's ready for overnights with the child, then the court will consider that if things go well otherwise. You two need to make sure that she's not caught in the middle of anything and try to make her as comfortable with uh, these visits as possible. No disparaging of the other parent. Remember that this child perceives herself as being half her dad and half her mom. So if you're putting down a parent, you're putting her down too. It's part of her identity. So it can't happen. If you have disputes, leave her out of them. Okay. Uh, Taylor, I want to get you back involved with your daughter. Okay? I really appreciate you need to follow through, though, strictly with what the court has set forth. Now, if, if Bronson, in his discretion as a parent, wants to expand from that for any reason, fine. But I want him to be in agreement with anything that the court hasn't specifically ordered. Okay? It's up to him at this point. I'm going to give him some authority to say no. But uh, every Saturday, 12 to 6, after this reacclimation visit this weekend. Okay? That works for me. Any questions, Bronson? Yes, sir. Nope. All right, Taylor? Um, is there something else my to address the court about? And never mind. We're doing this stuff on the weekend. So it's not going to I say that Scarlett does start school on the 15th. <laughs> right. That's why I'm sticking to Saturday. I don't want any interference with school. And I want to make that point, Bronson. I'm okay. going to authorize you to enroll her in the Circle School District, which I think you already have. Yeah. I don't want to have any, you know, educational dispute here. You've already okay. got a, an educational program in place. At, at this point, is her connected with her primary residence? Mm -hmm. um, I trust you actually live in the Circle School District, or you're opting to put her in the Circle School District. We're opting to put her in the Circle School District. Okay. We're well, I guess you can do residence. that now. So. Okay, if that's the best school for her, uh, in your judgment, uh, I'll authorize that to be her school uh, uh, choice for this year. All right. Um, Taylor will have access to her educational records at the school, but I'm not going to authorize Taylor at this point to, re to take her from the school without the dad's permission. Okay. okay. And I don't know what scenario where you would have to go get her at school, but... Taylor, but I I tried I, to go get her from school because that was the only other option I had to try to see her. Uh, I understand. I that. didn't want to do any of all this drama. And the thing is, is I've tried to be civil until I got until it wasn't civil. <laughs> and it's really emotional for me because I have not seen her since my baby's funeral. So that was the last time I saw her, spoke to her, heard her voice. Okay. Well, we're going to try to correct that. Okay. I want you to see her every week until you can kind of rebuild your relationship for a while. I want her to be comfortable with you. She All was right? comfortable with me. Well, was the okay. issue. We, we didn't we have are. issues like this. People just assumed things. And then just kept her from me. And I just want to note that the only thing, the absolute 
only thing that is wrong with my house is the water situation. I Get have already contacted a plumber. They tried to quote me $5,300. So I'm waiting to get a new estimate is what the sure. current situation is on that. That is the sure. only thing that is wrong with my house. All right. Well, let's make the McDonald's visit this uh, Saturday go well. Um, like I say, uh, buy her lunch, Taylor. And to have a have a nice visit with her. You got some catching up to do. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna cry like a baby, like I am now. <laughs> That's fine. Just try to make uh, the child as comfortable as possible under the circumstances. That's that's in her best interest that it goes smooth. Okay. All right. I will. Um, Bronson, I appreciate uh, you being. Um, the person that's going to provide the transportation. I think that helps make this work in a, in a very organized way. And so mm -hmm. um, you don't have to rely on her to bring her back on time. You'll just be there at her house, which I'm sure you know where it's at, right? Yeah. Okay. To, to do the drop off and pickups. Okay? okay. All right. Is that for every weekend or? Yes. For now. Yes. I want it to be regular and consistent and not okay. interfering with school. I just I want to get to a future, point but... where me and him can actually be co-parents again. Because the We're only other thing I can say at this point this is, is we used to be fine. I never hated you. I've never once kept her from you. I have always done what I could to try to make things work between us. And I hope I that you still that, have to just, okay, in your guys, heart too. Okay, no, no more sorry, exchanges between the two of the you. Okay, okay. Did he unblock Taylor, me so Taylor. that we could talk aside from Taylor, this? Taylor, stop. Part of being a good parent is listening, not just talking. We okay? haven't spoken in six months. I can't talk to him. I was just seeing if he would unblock me so we can talk outside of a a, a court call. I'm going to have to unblock you in order to do, set up these weekend things, Taylor. That's what I was just wondering, because I've been texting you for months, okay, but you well, don't get got, the things unblocked. The reason we do have I a time structure anything. established, okay? okay? We do have a time structure. Um, Both sides anything. should be able to plan. It's 12 to 6. Honor, uh, just asking for the next court date. Are we going to receive a, a piece of mail like this, like we did for, for this one? Well, I'm going to set the court date right now. Okay. And we're going to use the same Zoom numbers as we we use today. Okay. Make it less complicated. Okay. I'm going to look at this case again in September. And I'm going to expect that everything's going smoothly for the child on these mother visits between now and then. Uh, September the 17th at 11 o'clock. Eleven a.m. on September 17, folks. Does that work? Yes, that works. Yes, for me. Sir. Okay. I'm gonna set a review hearing in this case for September the 17th at 11 o'clock a.m. Again, by Zoom using the same Zoom numbers as today. Uh, I hope everything goes well for the child and both of you uh, between now and then. And you do need to establish lines of communication again that are peaceful and non-harassing and as hopefully as productive. Is his is he and may I just state the only argue. reason I have had her blocked is because of how she responds it's to been everything. both of us, Bronson. At this point, you can't just say it's one or the other. It's both of us. You've yelled, I've yelled. Okay, I've your communications should be about the child only, and they need yeah. to be peaceful and non-harassing. If you keep that in mind, 
You just conduct bi necessary business involving your daughter, exchanging information regarding her. And that's all you need to do. That's what uh, people that have joint legal custody do. They communicate with each other, keep each other informed. And whether they like each other or not, they get along when it comes to their child or children. That's that's what we're working toward. So good luck in that regard. We'll, we'll do this again by Zoom, September 17th at 11 o'clock. And uh, again, the next thing to happen, noon, El Dorado McDonald's, Ronson will have the daughter there for a one hour visit with mom. Okay? Yes. All right. There's nothing further at this time. The Rogers and Kingsley matter will currently be in recess. And this meeting may be ended for all at this time. Have a good day. You too.